Today we're going to be talking about these two devices right here. Clutches, primary, secondary. Going over just some of the basics in terms of aligning it, checking the offset, and just understanding what those things mean, and just a few other term terminology uh, related to the clutches. So we have some measuring tools over there. Some of them are not the proper instruments, but they do work for what the manual state. I will put some pictures of some offset tools in the video so you guys can see. Uh, they do, most manufacturers do have proper tools, but then you gotta pay all that money to get them. Uh, we'll show you some of the cheater ways to do it and uh, just what we know. We're not experts by any means, no. but uh, we do know at least a little bit. Enough to be dangerous. And we'll share that with you today. So this is on an old vintage Jag 79. Belt is a little bit worn on this particular unit, so it is gonna be sitting down a little bit in the clutch. That's typical of a belt that wears, your belt's gonna wear on the sides. That's what actually does the grabbing. The cogs are just there for cooling. That's why they went to cogs on both sides is for cooling purposes. It's not really a, a better or worse belt, it's just it cools better. Better cool. Um, if you want. So you can tell this is an old Parts Unlimited. They obviously don't make this belt new anymore, probably you have to get an NOS or eBay special. So first thing we're gonna talk about is the center to center. You're gonna see that usually in inches um, on, on most of the Articat player stuff, you may see it in millimeters on the Yamahas and Skidoo's. Basically you can do a conversion if it's in one or the other. What you're doing is you're measuring the center of this shaft, crankshaft, to the center of this shaft, the jack shaft, which is what the secondary is, is connected to. So center to center, you're basically going center line of this shaft to the center of this bolt is what I would go off of on this particular thing. So what we do that is just basically take a tape measure. Uh, there was certain tools as well um, we've come up with to measure the center to center. Like on our Yamahas, there was a little dimple in the chain case where you could go off of. And they usually did make tools where you could actually screw it in the end of the crank by the clutch bolt and it stuck out so you could measure it. So. Yeah, and when we did the motor swap on here, um, I think we just used the clutch bolt. Right, exactly. And then you could get exactly from the center of the clutch bolt to here. Yep. When we put the motor in, exactly. to get that set, at least a rough idea while putting the motor in and tightening it up. Yep. So here we're just kind of going to be, I mean, it's not going to be a 90, it's going to be 99% close not 100% because we're just rough estimate of where the center line of that crank is in the bolt. Yeah, and if you look, we have a mark here on this bolt and if you line it up- It's right it's in with the center. the center of the motor, which is the center of your crank. Yep. And I'll get on this side and we look right about there. So it's about 11 and- Just a tick over. Eighths. Yeah. 11 and three eighths. Yeah. And I believe the spec is 11 and 3 eighths, I'm pretty well, sure. Well, it was in, uh, it was 11.387, I thought, yeah. which would be about three 11 eighths. and 3 eighths. Right. So we're right on with our factory spec center to center, and that's what they're referring to is basically, you can see our measurement, center line of that, it's about 3 eighths. So in order to change that, some engines, the plate where you mounted the engine had elongated holes so you could actually move the motor back and forth. Uh, if you're referring to like a Yamaha Enticer, the chain case actually where the clutch was, was slotted. So you could move the, the secondary forward or back to change the center to center. Most of the times though, it's gonna be on the engine plate that has some sort of adjustability, whether it's the plate, whether it's the slots in the actual motor going to the plate. So that's why when you remove an engine, you always wanna double check before you remove it, what that measurement was because Nine times out of 10, if you don't know, and you take the bolts out, obviously there's witness marks of where it was, but you're never gonna have it perfect if you don't measure it. Next thing's gonna be the offset, which is basically where the relationship of the secondary and primary are at idle or not running, basically before it engages and starts, starts shifting. Um, the clutches are never gonna be shifting the same rate, and, the, and, the, and that's why you have an offset. So by the time it gets to full shift out, when this belt is all the way in the top and that's all the way in the bottom, the belt's gonna be straight in terms of this way. So that's why they have an offset measurement that's 
that's a rough ballpark basically of where it's going to be happy and not blow belt. So one thing you're going to hear of is, is, is float. And they're going to say, oh, you need an eighth inch of float plus or minus, you know, a 16th. And that's allowing the secondary to float back and forth on the shaft. And you can see we probably got about a 16th of an inch of float, which is about right. Um, that way, the belt, if there was a little bit of discrepancy on your offset, the clutch can kind of find its happy zone that way. And uh, we're also gonna show you how to remove a belt on one of these secondaries and primary combos. This is an old school button secondary. And by button, you mean these plastic little sliders here. Cat, Polaris, Yamaha, back in the day all used the same style clutch. Now there's rollers in them instead of sliders. So much more efficient, less drag. You don't have to replace that stuff all the time. So Mark's gonna show us here quick how to get that belt off. Yeah. If you wanna to touch on the shims is how you actually set. Yeah, we'll get into that after we get that belt off. Yep. He's talking about the shims that you're gonna see behind that clutch to adjust the offset. A lot of times you might wanna have someone hold the the brake so the track doesn't turn. Yep. Jewel in your clutch so that way the belt can sink down. And, and, yep. And the rule of thumb too is you can hear that snap. Um, if it doesn't make that noise and snap like that, you either have really, really dirty clutch components or you've got a broken spring. Yeah. Um, it should definitely snap back like that. If it does not, that could be a really, really poor performance, uh, bogging, poor shift out, you name it. So definitely make sure you give it the old twist test. So behind there, Mark was saying, to actually adjust the offset on these cat, and I believe Polaris on the older ones with a, with a keyed shaft, basically it's just a big keyway at the secondary is keyed onto. You put shims behind here or take shims away to move this clutch left or right. So from, from behind here, you know, if you added shims, you'd push the clutch that way, took shims away, you'd move it that way. And that's getting that offset measurement that I'll show you with our instrument here in a second. Those are just the shims. A little thicker, a little thinner. So, and that's exactly out of the service manual too. It's gonna say add or remove shims to get the proper offset. And holy crap, look at the chunks taken out of that belt. Yeah. Good times. Yeah, I think we can find another belt. So according to Articat on this particular one, they have a straight piece of metal that sits in between the sheaves. You can see that gap in there? And it lays across right on the clutch. And you measure from that piece to the edge of the inner sheave here. And it's about one inch is what they want. And I'm also gonna show you what you wanna do. You wanna check them on the front and the back. And that's talking about parallelism or how square the motor is in the chassis. So you see we have this old saw blade which fits perfectly which fits perfectly in there and you can see it's not all bowed our other tool is a little too thick to sit between yep there. and this tool here guys is actually a clutch holder tool but it's nice and but it's square square flat long so on certain applications we use that tool against the back side of the clutch on our like yamahas with comet clutches and stuff you know you lay that on the back and in certain service manuals, certain manufacturers state that they want a certain measurement between, so between like the sheave and the tool in the front and the back, you obviously want them the same, so that's square. But there is certain manufacturers that measure it like that. This just is how this particular model wants it to be measured. So all we do is we have the saw blade stuck in there. Nice and square piece of metal that's not all bowed, you know, cause it's not that thin metal, it's actually like a springy steel. So it always goes back. I'm gonna come around on this side. And then we'll, we'll measure that up. Like I said, there is room for discrepancy in that. Um, these are not like space shuttle measurements. You can see we're right on about an inch um, in the back. So we're looking at right there from that edge of the sheave to the saw blade rocking just about an inch maybe a touch more but we, we have, have that float. float we have that 16th of float so that's where we can keep in that range you don't want too much float because then you're gonna have noise of it chattering back and forth but you just want enough that it has some room to move and then we check in the front there 
can't quite get square on it, but you can see it's... It's very, very close. You want that even because that tells you your primary and your engine are in here straight. What technically some manuals will state is you want the, the rear a tick larger in measurement than the front because the engine, engine under, under torque load, it's gonna take the engine and pull it that way. And that's why they want it maybe like a 32nd more or 16th more in the back. That way when it's under load, it's technically square. But if you're square and square, it's not really gonna be that bad. More powerful sleds, they run a snubber bolt or a torque arm right off the bottom of the engine to the chassis. And that basically has a rubber peg on it that's adjustable that, I think I have a skidoo here that has a torque arm. Yeah, get my flashlight, I'll show you. So you guys can see down there, that peg with the, with the threaded bolt against the engine block, that's a torque arm. So a bigger powerful sled needs that because he would rip the motor plate right out and they would tweak it all the heck, you'd have to adjust it every other ride. So low horsepower sleds like these, they didn't have that. There's not a lot of power to be distributed there. So that's, that's basically it on, on some of the basics of the clutching measurements. Um, there's a lot more science involved in the, the weights and springs. That's where we're not experts quite yet. We've done a lot, a lot of testing. Yeah. Uh, where we've pretty much beat a dead horse, would you agree? Yeah, we have. We are very good at it. Very good at beating dead horses. Yeah. Um, and hopefully this winter, if it ever gets cold, we'll, we'll tangle with the clutching some more. Um, we've, we've definitely learned a ton since we started. Yeah. Um, getting, and, and learning these basics was was huge, you know, because you're looking at these measurements and you're wondering what the heck they're talking about, um, and all the terminology behind it. So, yeah, this is this is a very basic layout of, of how to yeah. measure that. You don't have to understand the insides, but if you're doing a motor swap or have to remove the engine for something, exactly some odd reason, just check yeah. it before you take it apart, and then uh, if you can find the specs, you can at least put it back and check where it should be. Because maybe it wasn't right in the fir first place, or you're fighting a problem that someone else created. That's exactly. one thing you can check. That's and a new, new belt always. Oh, uh, yes. Always Anytime mistakes. you're fighting some issues, you know, if you look at the belts, give it a good visual. If you have hourglassing, another terminology that you might run into is hourglassing. That's where the belt gets, gets wavy, thin spots in it from either getting stuck and pinched and burned. Or if someone didn't break the track loose and it was stuck to the ground and exactly. they just give it and it doesn't move, well, it's going to burn that belt one spot. Yep. And usually what's going to happen is it's going to thump and make a heck of a vibration when that thing comes around. So you could think you have a bad bearing or something, but truth be told, your belt has a huge narrow spot and it's just thumping every time it comes around. So belts do play a huge role in the clutching. So a new belt and a good belt is always a good thing to have. Talks a little bit on the belt deflection. Yeah, one other thing we didn't talk about is the belt deflection, this is which, a... which we still, I mean, we know what a good belt tension feels like, yeah. um, and we know what a bad belt tension, belt deflection feels like. This is pretty bad, guys. That's because the belt's worn. You can see yeah, it's it sitting deep be... in here. Um, belt deflection plays a lot with what if there's shims in between the secondary sheaves to open it and close it, if those are correct. The belt width, if it's new and not worn out. And the center to center also plays a part because the further you pull the motor away, the tighter the, belt the, tighter the deflection's gonna be. The closer you put it to the clutch, obviously you're gonna get a noodly belt. So that's where most of them say they put a straight edge on it or a piece of flat metal. You push down with a certain amount of force and from the starting angle or length to where you push it down, usually it's about an inch and a half. So that's a pretty good rule of thumb there. I think in the past we've used a fish scale mm -hmm. um, with a hook, but you want your belt kind of flat and then you pull with Pull down and you scale. and you look from here to there, you know, how much is that until the, the bottom when, when the bottom starts to pull the... up, that's when you know you've pulled it with enough force. And you're looking for that inch and a half about uh, deflection um, any more than that or any less than that, that's when you run into problems. You know, that's where you get a tight Breaking belt that has no deflection, is gonna squeal and burn, and it might bog the motor down because it's gonna grab really hard and wanna shift really, really fast. Um, 
most of the times too, when, when the belt is tight and the clutch isn't square, it's gonna wanna squeal because it's gonna start burning the sides of the belt down here when you have no clearance and the belt's so tight. So that's basically what deflection is. Um, and that, like I said, it's, it plays a lot of part in, in having the right belt length. And if you have the wrong belt, obviously your deflection is gonna be all goofed up center to center. And having the proper amount of, if there's shims in between the clutch, basically that, that keep it take, open and closed. Open it and your belt will sit further in and be looser. Or if you take them out and you actually squeeze that gap that we put the saw in, yep. this belt would probably actually ride up Oh, Almost yeah. where it would be as worn as it is. Right. But it'll pull your belt out further. And there is specifications, too, on, on wear limits on the width of the belt, too, in the, in the factory service manual. So that's something you can go off of, too, is measuring the width. And it'll have, like, a certain millimeter limit that, oh, you should probably change it if it gets below that. Um, I can tell just by looking at this and the amount of clearance we have in the, the primary here. There, it's pretty worn. Yeah. Uh, this is an inch and a quarter belt. Typically now, most sleds, modern, inch and three ace belts, some of them might be a tick wider than that, but old school uses a lot of inch and a quarter. Um, but the more performance oriented stuff and newer stuff is all inch and three ace, and that's talking about the, the width of the belt. That's about it on clutching though. It's a little clutching 101. Yeah. Um, like I said, if you guys have questions about the internals of a clutch and how that all works, we can definitely give you our two cents. Um, like I said, we're nowhere near clutch experts at all. So yeah, you take it as you wish. Yeah, you we know. can give you some head start pointers and things that we've picked up. We're still still fighting where there's a lot of variables. A lot of oh yeah, variables, a lot of variables. most of the time guys, if you try to make it better than stock on a stock application thing, it's hard to beat the stock setups. Yeah. Um, the factory stuff is pretty darn good. You can tweak it here and there to, you know, if you're at different elevations and, and such, but honestly, the factory definitely knows what the heck they're doing for yeah. the most part. Yeah. So if you can, if you can take the factory stuff and understand what they got going on, you know, you can start tweaking with it from there. But we found that we've had good luck with, with stock stuff. Yeah. So let us know in the comments if you have any questions regarding clutches. And if we missed anything, let us know. And we can always make a part two.